Welcome to our Spotlights on Creation series. My wife Delise and I like to watch nature programs on TV. We love to hear about all the newly discovered animal behavior that these programs show us. But my wife always has the same complaint. Why can't we hear about the animals themselves without having to hear about how many millions of years an animal supposedly has been around? Do we really have to listen to their silly ideas of where an animal came from, like a bear evolving into a whale? In our programs, we give you natural science without evolution. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the incredible world of the amphibians. What exactly is an amphibian? What are the miracles of design that they display? Are you aware that you can watch a seemingly magical transformation in a pond near you? Amphibians are one of the smaller groups found in nature, but I'm always excited to find them when I'm exploring. I've spent many happy hours turning over rocks and logs as I look for these beautiful and colorful variations of salamanders. On one amazing day in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, I bushwhacked for hours looking for rare species. By the time I emerged from that wilderness area, I had discovered nearly 10 species, most of which are only found in those mountains and nowhere else. Sometimes it's easy to find salamanders. In a redwood grove near San Francisco, California, California newts were marching through the forest on business of their own. I quit counting when I reached 100, and I could easily have doubled that on that wonderful morning. Salamander discovery can be really cool. Frogs and toads tend to be more visible to the casual observer. We love to find a pond at night where the frogs and toads are calling to each other in courtship battles of sound. We go down and watch them inflate their throats in various different ways. In Australia, we had the strange experience of tiptoeing through a field of giant cane toads at night. But even more thrilling was holding a tiny green and black poison dart frog in the hills above Honolulu. The Hawaiian ones aren't dangerous, since they don't eat the poisonous ants that they normally eat in their home range. No poisonous ants, no poisonous skin. I have had countless experiences like these, far too many to tell, but each one exciting and unusual in its own way. We hope you enjoy the world of amphibians in this program as much as we do. This Spotlight on Creation is part of a series of around 20, many of which are only available on DVD. Visit our website to order them all, and be sure to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any of our new videos. So enjoy a sample of natural science without evolution. For creationists, the vertebrate animals known as amphibians are examples of God's creativity and design. Their bodies and behavior are gifts of God to help them survive in various moist habitats. They have amazing skills and complex social interactions. Evolutionists say that amphibians are unsophisticated bridges between fish and reptiles. But when we examine the unusual and exotic amphibians, we find these claims to be far from reality. The one trait that all amphibians share is moist skin. It is permeable to the surrounding air and water, letting them absorb oxygen through their skin. But this means that they have to stay near fresh water or in moist habitats. They can never enter salt water. Very few live in cold climates, as they cannot generate internal heat like birds and mammals do. Frogs and toads are the most familiar forms to us, as we often see or hear them in ponds or in our backyards. There are very few physical differences between frogs and toads. 
Usually, these are arbitrary names applied to very similar animals, but they all have many traits in common. They leap sometimes enormous distances by using strong back legs tucked under their plump bodies. To catch food, they have a tongue that flips forward to nab insects. Sticky saliva helps catch slippery prey. They can't chew their food, so their big eyes help them to swallow. When they blink, their eyes sink down to help force a mouthful down their throat. Many species have amazing calls used for courtship and display. Each has its own unique song that only its own kind will respond to. They inflate throat sacs to amplify and resonate their calls. A chorus of singing frogs or toads with throats inflated is one of the most unusual sights in nature. Panamanian golden frogs wave their front arm at each other in territorial displays. This silent combat is truly a civilized way to settle differences without any violence. Wood frogs have been given the ability to freeze solid in winter, thawing out in spring with no ill effects. Spadefoot toads live underground during the dry season. They emerge during temporary rainstorms to breed and lay eggs. Before the ground dries and hardens, they dig back down and return to their long sleep. Poison dart frogs have defensive toxins in their skin. Any predator who tries to eat them will be poisoned. Fortunately, their bright skin colors help warn predators to stay away. Frogs and toads can be tiny or huge. The smallest are fingernail-sized like the glass frogs and toadlets. These are wonders of miniaturization with all the organs and abilities of their larger relatives. The largest are grapefruit-sized, like the cane toads and the horned frogs. These heavyweights either aggressively scarf down insects or wait in ambush for passing prey. Salamanders have bodies that look like lizards, but they lack scales and can never live in dry habitats. They start as aquatic larvae that closely resemble the adults. Some, like sirens, water dogs, and mud puppies never transform into air breathers. They retain their gills their entire lives and never leave the water. Newts are different from other salamanders in that they have dry skin and travel widely in the open. They seem unconcerned by danger because they have toxins in their skin, ensuring that they are not eaten. They warn potential predators by having bright colors of orange, yellow, red, or white. Some salamanders live most of their lives underground like moles, emerging only rarely to travel to breeding areas. The marbled salamander migrates many miles in large groups to the pools where they were born. After laying their eggs, they return to their underground homes. Lungless salamanders are the most varied group, especially abundant in North America. These small species do not have lungs at all, but breathe entirely through their wet skin. They are often extremely colorful and have unusual courtship behaviors. Cave salamander are found in cave mouths and tunnels, living their days in total darkness. Slimy salamanders secrete gluey latex to discourage predators. Salamanders also vary greatly in size. The smallest are the pygmy salamanders. These fragile dwellers of Appalachian spruce forests reach only two inches long and can be dwarfed by a small millipede. The largest are the giant salamanders of China and Japan. These can reach five feet long and spend their entire lives in cold mountain streams. Extra flaps of skin increase the surface area, letting them breathe underwater without coming up for air. 
So in the quiet world of salamanders, we see God's love of the unusual and the exotic. The least known group of amphibians are the Sicilians. Since they have no limbs, the smallest look like earthworms, but the largest can reach nearly five feet long. About 200 known species live scattered around the tropics. Nearly blind, they dwell underground as expert burrowers or are aquatic. When we look at the complex life cycle of amphibians, we find as dramatic a miracle as anything we find in nature. Amphibians lay eggs that usually hatch into aquatic larvae. These young breathe with gills and stay underwater until they are big enough to become adults. Then their bodies change dramatically. From breathing in water with gills, they must now start breathing in air with lungs. Often their digestive system changes as well. The young tadpoles of frogs and toads grow legs and lose their tails. These are huge changes. Massive cellular reorganization is taking place, all while the animal must continue to eat and breathe during the transformation. How does this sort of multi-stage transformation evolve? How can it slowly develop over millions of years? At what point does an evolving animal split into a multi-stage life cycle? This process is too complicated for random chance to produce. This applies to all animals that have a multi-stage lifestyle, like butterflies and jellies. Evolution is a drift when it pretends to account for the complexities and problems of this area. These wonderful little wetland jewels are fragile compared to other animals. Because of their porous skin, they are very susceptible to pollution and infections. Dangerous fungi species accidentally transported to new areas by human activity are lethal to frogs and toads. Entire species are being wiped out as the fungi works its way through remote jungles. Many species around the world are dying from causes we barely understand. These gifts of God are being lost, and we are having little success saving them. Let's not forget the hoppers and swimmers and walkers that God has made. Over the years, science has come to understand a complexity in the amphibian world that doesn't fit the evolutionary theory, that this group of animals is a simple example of transitional forms. Yet evolutionists still claim that proto-amphibians crawled out of the sea to become the first primitive land animals. But when we look at the amphibians themselves, they tell us something different. They are sophisticated both in body and actions. They transform from young to adult in miracles of transformation unmatched in other vertebrate animals. They have complicated parental and courtship behavior. They are very successful in wet habitats, often able to function well in and out of water. So we find that God's designs are just as perfect in amphibians as are his designs in the rest of creation. When God made the amphibians, he created some of the most amazing aquatic life we have on earth. We truly have a wonderful God that the animals give glory to in every gift they display. <laughs>